finished, ask me. What about if this person comes into a car because the masjid is far away? Well, if he's not able to come to the masjid on foot and he comes into the car, then he will be rewarded. But definitely his reward will be much more if he comes on foot. For Varili Banu Salama radiallahu anhum, when the masjid of the Prophet was built, their houses were a bit further away from the masjid. So they wanted to transfer themselves close to the masjid. So when they did so, Prophet of Allah, he said, Banu Salama, diyarakum. O Banu Salama, keep to your places. Tuktabu lakum atharukum. Your steps will be recorded for you. So why should you move close to the masjid when you have this opportunity to have the masjid a bit further away so it's more paces, more steps, and that will give you more reward. The fourth category, and I would like, please, the ones at the back to lower the noise. Please, brothers, brothers, who are coming out of the masjid, I understand that some people want to leave, but please, this is a masjid, please, Zakumullah khayra, Zakumullah khayra. And that is two people who loved one another in the sake of Allah. Upon him they gathered and upon him they separated. Meaning that they were gaining this love and preserving this love and protecting this love whether they are in present together or whether they are separate from one another. So nothing will separate them except for the death. Islam calls upon the people to build this relationship, starting from the salam. Assalamu alaikum brings the love. Look at the people around you who are non-Muslims. When they pass by each other, what do they do? Nothing. Hardly they give a smile. They don't say a word. Even that hello is taken away. So the Muslim here brings the salamu alaikum to the person whom he knows and the person who doesn't know. And that brings the love. When you say salamu alaikum, straight away your heart opens, subhanallah. And the smile is brought onto your face. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, al-mu'minu ma'lafa, the person who is a mu'min, a believer, he should be a social person. A person who could be easily socializing with. It's not a good person whom the people think that he is to himself. They don't like him. So you have to be a socialized person. A person who's socializing with your smile, with the way that you talk, with the salam of yours. And verily, if you have gained the love between you and your brothers, you've gained the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet of Allah, he said, Qala Allah, Allah said, Wajabat mahabbati lil mutahabbina fi. My love is incumbent, is gained already for those who had been loving one another in my sake. They sit with one another with my, for my sake. They visit one another for my sake. This love in Allah will give you the sweetness of Iman. Three things, if you've got them, then you'll gain the sweetness of Iman. One of them, and you al mar la yuhibbuhu illa lillah. You love the person only for the sake of Allah. And if you had the love to the brothers, then you'll have the safety and the security on the day of resurrection. On the day of resurrection, when the people are afraid, the ones who are loving one another, they will be not scared. Who says so? Allah. الْأَخِلَّاءُ يَوْمَ إِذٍ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوْ إِلَّا الْمُتَّقِيمُ The ones who are akhilla, friends with one another, they are together enemies to each other except for the pious. The people who are pious, the people who are righteous. يَا عِبَادِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْكُمُ الْيَوْمَ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ تَحْزَنُونَ Today, Allah says, no, there is no fear upon you. There is no fear upon you. And you don't have to be in sorrow. So this is, tells us that the people who love one another, the pious people, there is no, nothing to be scared on them. And from the thing that would as well spread the lung, love amongst the people is to meet one another in the house of Allah. In the masjid, just like you're sitting now, for verily you are with the one whom you love. So if you love a person in the masjid, on the day of resurrection, Allah will gather you with that person you will love in the masjid. iman, The most strongest knots and bond is in Iman, Al-Hubbu Fillah, to love in the sake of Allah and to hate for the sake of Allah. If you do so, then you have completed your Iman. The fifth category is a man whom being seduced by a woman. Whom this woman, she has a rank in her society. She's known, she's a senior woman. And that means she's got the money. 
and also she's got the beauty. And this woman, she gives herself to him and she says, go ahead. So what he says, inni akhafullah, I fear Allah. This fear of Allah Azza wa Jal that grows up and goes higher and higher the more that you sit in the masjid, the more that you pray, the more that you recite the Quran. For verily, if the person prays in the masjid, his five daily prayers, and he does his recitation of the Quran, and he does his ibadah, definitely has got no time for sinning. He has got no time to look at those things that would make him to go away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This man who had a woman who is really beautiful, and she's got the money, and she's telling him, go ahead. So this person says, inni akhafullah. Verily, I fear Allah. The story of Yusuf alayhi salam, whom he was in the house of Al-Aziz. His wife, she was beautiful. And this man, Yusuf alayhi salam, the prophet, is in her house. He had the beautiful face. Prophet sallallahu alayhi he said that Allah azza wa jal, when he created the beauty, he created it, okay, as two halves. One lump, two halves. One half, everybody shared the beauty in that half. And one half only to Yusuf alayhi salam. So beautiful that now nobody would suspect the wife of Al-Aziz, whom Yusuf is to be there in their house, being looked after, that they will do something. So they've got all the elements for him to do fornication and nobody would know anything about it. For verily, وَرَاوَدَتُ الَّتِي هُوَ فِي بَيْتِهَا عَنْ نَفْسِهِ and she had tried to seduce him and she said to him she locked the doors she closed the windows and she said go ahead said, God forbid is my Lord the three people who were locked in the cave and they were locked by a big stone they said to each other that we will never get out of this cave unless we ask Allah with the closest deed and action that we've done for the sake of Allah. One of those three, and I asked the brothers with the back, please, please, brothers, ya akhi, brothers at the back. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Allahu al-musta'an. For verily, one of those people, he said, I had a cousin whom I wanted to do it with her. But she keeps refusing. One day she was in a financial situation that she's in need of money. So she came to me and asked me. And I said, I'm not going to give you until you give me. And when he's about to do it, she said to him, fear Allah. Do not break the seal except with a lawful intercourse. So he just feared Allah and he pulled out. And that is, he says, if I did this to you, O Lord, for the sake of you, remove the rock. So the rock moved a third which is one of the thirds or the three actions that those three people had done. So here the person, when he is fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he comes to these points and this situation, he would say, I would rather keep away from this haram and not to just to indulge into the whims and desire and have my satisfaction. This person will get the shade. There will be no shade except for the shade that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides. And then finally, we come to the last two ones. A man who made a sadaqah, gave a sadaqah, charity, and he had hidden that charity. Now, uh, showing the charity is no problem. If you, for example, wanted to make the people follow your example, that's no problem, inshallah. But if the person wanted to show the people in order to show that he gives charity, then his charity will be invalid. But Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, in tubdu sadaqat, if you show off your sadaqah, it's okay, inshallah. It's very good. But if you hide it, it's better. If you have done it in a hidden way, nobody knows about it, give it to the poor people, then it's better for you. And you should know as a person who gives charity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you. And he knows what is going into your heart, in your chest. So if you have given the charity for the sake of that, nobody knows about it for the sake of that you will meet that charity on the day of resurrection, then that charity that your left doesn't know how much your right spend, it will give you and provide you that shade which you are in need of on the day of resurrection. So this person is away from showing off. He wants to give it hiddenly. He does not want to do it except in sincerity. 
This sadaqa definitely it will extinguish the wrath and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a prophet of Allah said, Dawu mardakum bi sadaqat. And that is, cure your ill people by giving sadaqah. Last person. And by the way, sadaqah could be as well with a smile. Sadaqah could be by the dhikr of Allah. A sadaqah even by intercoursing with your wife is a sadaqah. So sadaqah is in all aspects, but the sadaqah that he's saying here is the sadaqah of the money, of the property that you give. Number seven, a person who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his own. Again, away from showing off sincere to Allah and then when he remembers Allah Azza wa Jal he's in tears so he's not doing it for the sake of the camera he's not doing it for the sake of that the people look at him so this person he's got some sort of watchfulness inside himself he fears Allah Azza wa Jal and that is the one who will remember when Allah Azza wa Jal on the day of resurrection will take him aside and will make him to you know Confess, Allah will tell him about the sins that he used to do. Nobody knows about them except for Allah the Almighty. And when he, you know, shows his sins and the, and the, and the abd, the slave, will confess and submit. If he remembers that, he will weep and cry. Verily, this is how the person uh, uh, trains himself to make a watchful self of himself. A watchful self of himself, like Ka'b ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. When he was left behind in the battle of Tabuk, himself was talking to himself. Every day that he wants to go, he's just hesitating. He's not decisive. So himself talks to himself. He said, I am capable of doing this. Come on. I could go now and follow the Prophet of Allah for the jihad. So the person when he trains himself, himself becomes a nafsul lawam. It will give him a reproach. He will tell him off. So when the person is, mashallah, trained on to do that, alhamdulillah, you leave him alone. So if your son is hooked to the prayer so much, don't you worry for himself will not let him whatsoever to abandon the prayer because we'll tell him off. He cannot be comfortable except if he prays. So those people, when they are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll have some tenderness in their hearts. Straight away they submit and straight away the eyes comes in action and he will be in tears. So when you hear the verses of the Quran being recited upon you, and they go inside your heart, and they start thinking of the Akhirah, straight away your eyes will be overflowing with tears. The cream of the crop, again, the father and the parents, again, they have a big role in this issue, and you just tell that person to recite the Quran, Ya Sheikh. Are they going to be stopping my lecture? Okay, here, inshallah. This is the uh, disadvantages of the second jama'ahs. Al Khulasa, the cream of the crop. Again, we need to bring up youth who are healthy, youth who respond to the ayat, youth who are raised to recite the Quran, and all of that. And this is the final seventh person. And inshallah, I will leave some five minutes for you to ask questions regarding those seven or regarding the night of the midnight of Shaban, which we spoke about. Some of you we were not here. So please uh, make sure that we are giving as short as possible the question. We don't want to lecture. Give the question and let the question be in a beneficial. Jazakumullah khairan. I'll start with Fadl. Let the question be beneficial, please. But don't ask question that I need to have a half an hour to understand. تفضل If the person is saying that I am in a house which is double glazed windows and, and I will never hear the adhan if even if somebody goes on the minaret if you have a minaret and call for the adhan does that mean that I'm exempted from coming to the jama'ah Brother, is actually, it is nothing to do with I'm inside, okay, a house and I'm locking the windows. It's, it could be a person, even he's putting his headphones. We're talking about that the person, if he knows that the jama'ah is on, even by his watch, and he's within the encatchment area. So if he is, let's say, outside his house, and he could hear the mu'adhan, then that area is incumbent upon him to come to the jama'ah, whether he was inside the house 
or outside the house or inside the car next to the masjid because you're not going to be able to hear the adhan as well because there's double glazed windows in the car as well. So if he has within the encashment area and he knows that, so these days we have watches, alhamdulillah. We know what time is the adhan is to be triggered. And to say as well here in this country, we hardly have an adhan outside. Very hard to have an adhan which is outside. If we're going to implement that here in the adhan, nobody will come to jama'ah. So make sure as well if you are far away from the masjid to come once, if you can't once a day, okay, once every two days, if you can't once every three days, once a week, you have to come to the masjid. And every time you feel your iman drops, nothing will bring the iman up again except for your coming to the masjid. This is the masjid where we now we find the shaitan cannot penetrate because we're together, subhanAllah. None of us thinking about whims and desire. None of us thinking about this obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our iman is up because we're in the masjid. Soon as we leave the masjid, God knows what's going to happen. Iman drops down, and person now start with the shaitan thinking of things which is haram. Type. Is that for the question? For them. Can I just ask you to ask this question? In the story of Yusuf uh, uh, as you mentioned, I have a question regarding the ayah So what's the tafsir in terms of uh, the first and the latter part? Well, first of all, okay, well, uh, you have to ask all with permission. I just like to encourage people when they have microphones to start asking questions. <laughs> so I would like you, peace brothers, to come forward. Had it been that have sisters listening, I would have taken the microphone off. So to make you forced to come close to me. But because of the sister, I have to talk to the microphone. Otherwise, I don't want to disturb these people who pray. And the people who pray, they want to disturb us, inshallah. So the question is regarding the verse. This ayah is being interpreted by the scholars. What is the thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Yusuf alayhi salam to back off? Okay? And you could refer it to the tafsir of Ibn Kathir or the tafsir of Abdul Rahman al Nasadi or any other tafsir which like Ibn al Tabari or Al Qurtubi. And the loss of tafsir that like he had seen his father, Yaqub alayhi salam, and all of that in that interpretation, but we know the end of the story, the, the, the end of the, or the cream of the crop of this, that Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam did not do anything to her. Actually, on the contrary, he had run away from her. And when she ran away from her, she took his shirt from the back. So she tore it off. And as soon as he opened the door, then that person who was from her family saw that. And he has now, each one claims that I am innocent. And she says, no, I'm innocent. So when her man of her family saw that Yusuf alayhi salam, his shirt was torn off from the back, he knew that he was running away and she was trying to grab him because he was torn off from the front. She was trying to push him away because he's coming. And that's how it was. So Yusuf alayhi salam, Allahu a'lam, what did he see as the burhan of Rabbi? Hammat. Hammat bihi. Hammat bihi, of course, he wants you know, to do the phonica, but hamma biha. This is again more than one interpretation. Hamma biha. Allahu a'lam. Allahu a'lam. Now, and when he says Allahu a'lam, I made a fatwa. Fadl. Um, what is the recommended fasting for Sha'ban? Can you fast continuously? You cannot fast a month continuously whatsoever, except for Ramadan. It's not allowed to fast the whole of Sha'ban at all. This is a bid'ah. But to fast most of the Sha'ban, yes. Any other month, you cannot fast all of it. Only Ramadan. Prophet of Allah, Ramadan. He never fasted a whole month except for Ramadan. Month of Sha'ban, you could fast as much as you want. And there are some days which the scholars have said regarding the hadith, or like accept not to fast it and not to fast the Jum'ah on its own. Now, do you have any sisters' questions here? That's a newspaper. It's not a question, is it? Tfadl. Oh. It says, please answer the question. Throw down, landed on the second row. Something in the back. Somebody had some question at the back, please.
Any person you got a piece of paper, please? I don't think people are going to steal pieces of papers, are they? <laughs> you read, just sister, if you throw, the, throw another. Ah, there's a fan, sister. It's just. Oh, there. oh we could see the question is actually on the panel. You have to write it again. <laughs> you have to write the question. Now, do you have letters now to get that question? <laughs> Assalamualaikum Sheikhna, Zakallah Khair. May Allah reward you for this beautiful uh, reminder. Uh, uh, sisters, please do not throw any because there's a fan there. Yeah, the fan is going to take it away, you, phew, isn't it? Fadl. Now, um, can anyone get that state of the seven? Is it possible for someone? Would you want the sisters to get the questions, please? That's better. Right? Can we gain to be from the seven? Of course. All the seven. Can anyone join all these blessings of the seven? I don't think you're a youth, are you? No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I passed on that. <laughs> you're past your teenagers, so Definitely. you can't be a shab. <laughs> <laughs> I wish to. <laughs> uh, yes, here he shall. Fadman. I just want to ask, um, you know the story of Yusuf when his wife came and uh, then she was found to be guilty, then uh, why did Yusuf السلام, uh, go to prison after? Yusuf السلام, was in prison because of dhulm, injustice had taken place. They've decided to put him in the prison even though he was innocent. That's why at the end of the story that um, one of the two who were with his prison, they were the two people that were with him, they knew that he was a prophet, an interpreter of dream. And one of them, who was a servant for his king, he told him about the story of that prisoner, which is Yusuf alayhi salam. And that's how the king knew about him. And he had a dream and he interpreted. It's a long story, cut it short, to say that he, the innocence of Yusuf alayhi salam, in the verses which I've recited in Surah Al-Maghrib, by the way. Surah Al-Maghrib, I've recited those verses which had shown the innocence of as soon as Yusuf alayhi salam was innocent, he was being set to be the minister of budget or the budget minister not only that prophet muhammad sallam, he said may allah have mercy upon yusuf السلام, he's being given the option to get out of the prison but he said i'm not gonna get out of the prison until what that my innocence to be what proved he said if it was me prophet of allah i would have what come out that means yusuf was so patient if somebody given him like release from the prison he would have gone out get out khalas. Prophet would have just gone out. But Yusuf said him, no. He said, I want to be staying in until my innocence be proved. Rahim Allahu Yusuf. He stayed there. And also Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he asked Allah Azza wa Jal, Arini kayfa tuhiyil maut. Show me, Lord, how you give life to the dead. Give life. I mean, I believe that you are capable of doing that, but I want to know how, what is the process of doing it. So, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wanted to protect the Prophet Ibrahim. He said, we have more priority to have doubt about the power of Allah than Ibrahim. That means Ibrahim did not have any doubt. If we had doubt, so we didn't have doubt, definitely Ibrahim did not have a doubt. He was asking, that how, how can you, you know, it's not, uh, do you, are you capable? He did not ask, are you capable of giving life? But he was asking basically, how do you bring, that is, the life to the dead? And that's why Allah asked him to take a bird and cut it forth. Uh, in pieces and put them for birds and put them in the mountains and then call them and they came to to life again now sisters yeah. so this is from the sister does allah honor muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by not addressing him by his name in the quran or what is the hikmah behind this uh, does the quran respect muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by not mentioning his name but there is a mentioning of his name ma kana muhammad aba ahadin min rijali Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, what is the hikmah in not specifically mentioning the name when saying O oh, Prophet, for example, okay. rather than saying O oh, Muhammad? So. Well, I wouldn't say that, yani, first of all, this is linked to something which is a specialty. But I know that the Prophet of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the most eminent of the son of Adam. Wala fakhr. And the Prophet sallallahu was not mentioned as much as, for example, Ibrahim alayhi salam. 
He was not mentioned as much as Isa alayhi salam. Prophet of Allah was not mentioned in name I'm talking about. Not that much. Prophet Ibrahim, Prophet Musa alayhi salam was mentioned so many times. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was mentioned along with his ummah. Ya ayyuhal amanu, Prophet Muhammad is with them. And Allah azza wa he said, wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim. Verily you are upon high character. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, two attributes together and never been given to any prophets. Bil mu'minina ra'uf and rahim. He is for the believers, ra'uf and rahim. These two attributes of Allah being given to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ra'uf and rahim, together, combined, only for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Allah ta'ala a'lam, you have to refer to more deep depth investigation regarding this issue, that why Allah did not say, ya Muhammad, na'am. But there are other prophets they were not mentioned as well as in yeah as well. Now, so uh, there are other prophets like Elyasa. There's no yeah Elyasa. Now, um, a brother is asking, can we say may Allah curse him about the shaitan? Can we say may Allah curse him? Is it recommended? Cursing the shaitan by the Allah's curse is no problem. A'udhu billahi min ash shaitan rajim is a curse. I seek refuge in from the cursed, cursed shaitan. Al-Rajim means the cursed. Okay? But when I say, Allahna, damn you, that's the one that you're not allowed to say that. Because the shaitan gets bigger now. He helps, he likes it. I have provoked him so much that he's insulting me. But when I curse you by the curse of Allah, not by my curse. The curse of Allah, he goes small. So, Ista'idh billah. So, you say, Ista'udh billah, Bismillah, he goes little. Yakhnis. You don't know the curse of Allah, it goes bigger. So one day when the Prophet Sallallahu was with a companion, the, one of the, the animal tripped over his, his, in his foot. So he said, Ta'isat dabba. Damn, damn. Damn you shaitan because of that. He said, no, the shaitan is going to look like elephant now. Big, huge. Because you cursed him with a word, not the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. Fa'al'anuka bil'a'natillah. Yes, curse you with the curse of Allah. Not my curse. Naam. So any other questions? Bye. Yeah, sisters, questions? Um, the, I gotta give you another two, three minutes because I need to leave as well. The, the question, khair. you know, when you said that the just ruler, the just Amir, does that include? Does that include, like, for example, a father, head of the house, and we said that example, the head of the masjid. That's all included. Yeah? Yes, everybody is a shepherd. Everybody is responsible. So the direct hadith is for the Imam, the Khalifa. Included with the Imam, you are an Imam inside your house. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was not a leader. He was a prophet, but he was called Imam. Qanit, Hanifa, Muslima, Awah, Halim, all these names of Ibrahim alayhi salam. An Imam. Naam. Zakallahu khayran for those questions. The last question for the sisters. Yalla, fadhali. I have to have more questions for the sisters. Is it from the sunnah to place activities in the masjid to bring the youth in? That's the first question. The best question? Oh, that's the first question. No, the first question. There's two more. <laughs> it is allowed to bring uh, activities in the masjid in order to drag the youth to the masjid. So can I just ask specifically, what are the activities that... Uh, I, I, it's not specific, but I'll mention a few. Football, for example, with a softball, that's not going to hurt anything. No. You cannot bring football and play here. You could bring football and play at the back. Not in the front. Yeah. This is the area for the masjid. It's supposed to be for people who read Quran. Imagine I'm reading Quran, somebody knocked me with a, with a ball. Okay? Or somebody's making disturbance. So, if you have a table tennis and you have it in one of the rooms, one of the facilities inside yeah. the masjid, is no problem. We have community hall at the back. MashaAllah. Community hall. Khalas. Very good. Okay? I know that these things that uh, will bring more people, like food would bring adults. Lecture with kebab, everybody will come. Uh, lecture with kebab, yeah. mashallah. Is there examples from the companions? What did they used to do in the masjid for activities? The masjid, the activities in the masjid they had at the time of the Eid, for example. The people come from the Abyssinian. They're well known for their acrobatics. And they start moving and throwing javelins up and making sort of you know, acrobatics, the halal circus, okay? <laughs> and companions to watch, all right? So that's activities inside the masjid. Um, but this is, you know, like once in a while, but we're not going to make the masjid like 
uh, a person is going to have a match now. We're going to go into the masjid. Why are we going to have a match? We don't want to turn the masjid into like bed and breakfast or sport hall. It's an activity at the back, no problem. But inside the masjid here, it's supposed to be the main thing is for what? Dhikrullah. So if, for example, in the Eid day, we want to bring entertainment to the people, we brought some people to make a acrobatic once in a while, that's for the Eid, it's no problem. Yeah. But if they can watch it at the back, it would be better than here. Better than here. Yani, let's say, for example, the masjid is locked off. Isha is finished. Khalas. Nobody is going to tell you not to play here. You play here. Okay? So it's halal. But as I said, yani, during the time of the prayers, it's, it's not, people will not really accept it and will start complaining. True or not? They'll complain. A lot. <laughs> the, the next question is two more from the sisters. Is it from the Sunnah to reserve places in the Salah for certain individuals, for example, Taraweeh behind the Imam? No, you cannot reserve unless the person is inside. So if he went to the toilet, you reserve. But he comes and he says, uh, this place is for my brother, but he's having some kebab in the restaurant. No. The Hufad, for example, who are going to crook the Imam. Hmm? For example, Hufad, who are going to crook the Imam. Hufad, behind the Imam, the Imam will choose them. Not each half of the will become the other. Some of the the Imam doesn't want them to be there because they are upsetting him. The way that they help him. Yeah, they have to. That's a must. So you could have just like this. Another one says half of. Wallah. Just like this next to it, half of. Okay, it has to be. Half of Mu'addin. Mu'addin is for him because he's going to make the Adhan. What I would choose that the Adhan to make the Mu'addin is the Imam himself will take the spot of the Mu'addin. So when he finishes the Adhan, the Imam will come and the Mu'addin will take his place. But the half of the Adhan, you have to have another one like this, is an idea for you. Yeah, another one for half of. Nobody can take it. This half of, not any half of. Because lots of Hafad, mashallah, these days. The half of the Imam chosen. Because he's the one who's going to be uh, uh, in communication properly with the Imam. Otherwise, it's going to be chaos. And you have more than half of each one wants to correct now. And the Imam cannot hear which correction is this. So let's be the half behind him. And that how, that's how it is going to be. And I'm pretty sure, mashallah, this masjid had got a lot of experience regarding this. And our, your Imam is fantastic, mashallah. Hafizahullah. Jazawallah khayran. Wa nasallah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yanfa'na wa iyaakum bima qad sami'na. Wa yaj'ala thalika fi mizani a'madina. Inna huwa liyu thalika wal qadiru alayh. Wa subhanaka Allah bihamdik. Ashhadu lam tasaghfiru katab. Zakun lakhir.